What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Angry Jack of Bra Bricks. I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm making sure my buddy... Just let him know it's live. Just in case... Uh, let me get my first text. Let me make sure my chat's up. All right, so we've got... Uh, we've got Yak... We got Vixen, we got Bear, we got Paula, we got Bronx, the Bronx Jackalope, Liralope, Tenshi, and the Backwoods Hickalope. All right, and we got Garen. What's up? What's up, Ers? And Paula. Yes, yes. All right, guys. Uh, I had a request earlier from uh, Brian. Brian, uh, through a chat, <clears throat> said, uh, tonight's topics for conspiracy and paranormal corner? How about? Fuck it. Why not? I mean, there's a lot of shit we could talk about in regards to uh, conspiracy and paranormal. And I just got a new deck from the motherfuckers over there at Conflicted. And guess what this deck pertains to? Pertains to conspiracies. Let me try it again. Try it again. I don't know if you guys got that. Was asked if we could do something about conspiracies and paranormal. Conspiracy. And we're on the same lane, fucking same uh, wavelength there. That's kind of spooky. That's kind of spooky, right? It's kind of spooky. Now, I haven't opened it yet to see uh, what the fuck it's about because. Uh, I wanted to wait till the streamy stream stream to see how how it all works. Says uh ask your own question if you think your question is good enough to be in our next conflicted deck. Okay, that's not the shit. That's not There's supposed to be some goddamn instructions in this bitch. Ah, here it is. Rules. Three plus players. Our conspir oh wait, <clears throat> let me get my voice right. Are conspiracies made up lies believed by skeptics or the real truth mainstream societies can't handle? Your goal is to convince your friends to believe what you want them to believe. 1. Shuffle the deck and place it in the center of the table. 2. The first player reads a card and each player gives their answer one round. The player asking the question awards the card that was just read to the person with the best answer. The game moves clockwise and the process repeats. Play as many rounds as desired. The player with the most awarded cards at the end of the game wins. All right, that's pretty fucking straightforward. I mean, you know, it's not going to play it. I'm just kind of curious. So uh, let's just... Well, fuck, let's see what the first card here says. First card says... WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has claimed a president Hil that president uh, what, 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 what the fuck? Rewind that. Blah, 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 blah. Has claimed that President Hillary Clinton's Charity Foundation and ISIS are both being funded by the same shadowy groups operating in the Middle East, especially the governments of Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Do you agree, do you agree with Julia Assange? What would be the agenda of Saudi Arabia and Qatar? Uh, what? It says president. Did they fucking really think? Before they printed this bitch, that it was that for sure a fucking thing that they thought. When was this shit printed? I'm I'm curious as fuck now because hold up here. 2016 is when it printed. The fuck? Hold the fuck up, man. This just straight says President Hillary Clinton. Huh. Did we just slip in a fucking fucking uh, 
Mandela effect shit here? Is this shit from like another dimension where Clinton became motherfucking president? The fuck? All right, well, you know what? I I, I, I get that, but to print it, I mean, it would have just it would have been just as easy. It would have been just as easy to say presidential hopeful Hillary or not even president, just Hillary Clinton's charity foundation. Just take president out of that bitch. I know it has more of a sinister impact if a motherfucker was the president, but still, everybody who knew the fuck Hillary Clinton was, so they could have just said. Julia Assange has claimed that Hillary Clinton's charity foundation and ISIS are both being funded by the same shadowy groups operating in the Middle East, especially the governments of Saudi Arabia and Qatar. So yeah, I can tell you straight up, Hillary's all up in that fucking ISIS shit, her and Obama. That's, they created that shit. Next card, I don't even, that's not even conspiracy. That's motherfucking truth. Go cool, on, let's see what, I'll give him another, give him another fucking chance here. Give him another chance here. All right. Here we go. Another card here. It says, Numerous ancient civilizations around the world had the custom of head binding. Oh, I already know where this is going. I already, I already know where this motherfucker is going. A practice where two boards were tied around an infant's head in order to make the crown of the skull grow longer than a normal person's. These cultures did this to mimic the appearance of ancient gods that ruled over their ancestors also found a world around the world are humanoid skulls which are naturally elongated they are usually 30 percent thicker than a normal person's skull and none present the sagittal suture lines the scars after mending the cervical uh, cranial planes a feature found in every human on earth dna tests done on the set of skulls which were found in Paracas, Peru, said they are not human. Ooh. How does the fact, how does this fact fit in with the belief that humans either came from primates or were created by a god according to his own image? Oh, oh, bing, 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 bing. I can answer that one. Mmm. Genetic manipulation. Aliens came down. Either A, genetically modified some monkeys or b they fuck some monkeys either or bingo that's how we're here boom bitches there it is okay all right enough of this shit enough of this shit i'm kind of like i'm on a fence on this conflicted you know i gotta have a conversation you need to you need to put out a press release or some bullshit and say yeah we had a we had a guy who was working with us he's not working with us no more kind of jumped the gun QA department let that slip through by accident. Whoop de whoop woo woo. You know, it's like, yeah, fuck, it happens. You know, it happens. It happens. They even talk about the crystal skulls, man. You know, that's the basis. That's the basis of the uh, the motherfucking crystal skull that uh, vodka. But did you know? Who is uh, behind Crystal Skull Vodka? Who who is the uh, spokesperson? Hmm hmm hmm. Dan Aykroyd. So Dan Aykroyd wanted the Crystal Skull and the Crystal Skull Crystal Skull format to match the Crystal Skulls that we see out there and whatever. Blah blah blah. So uh, literally, I was created by a god or an alien because I have negative blood so i have nothing to do with monkeys uh lol well uh i was created by god or an alien because i have negative blood so i have nothing to do with the monkeys well you know i believe it's probably genetic manipulation personally because human beings are fucked up we're all fucked up and it's because our dna was monkeyed with Pardon the pun. But because of that, uh, human beings have never been right in the head. That's why we can never be fucking satisfied is because we are not natural. We're not natural. And, you know, hence, that's where a lot of the the 
some of the stuff could be explained as far as created in God's image and blah, blah, blah. This is a fucking arrogant some bitch that's walking around saying, yeah, I created these motherfuckers. But that does not fuck with my belief because I do believe in a creator because somebody had to create them some bitches, right? Create them motherfucking aliens. Aliens didn't create themselves. So anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, ba, 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 ba. One skull named Einstein, the other Jose. Eh? You see, I heard two of the keepers of crystal skulls were on coast to coast last week. Really? I heard one of the skulls is sitting in a fucking closet. <laughs> Some lady's closet. Like, she's like, uh, I think Dan Aykroyd's the one even brought that shit up. I like I like uh I like Crystal Skull. That's my that's actually my second favorite vodka. My first being Jimi Hendrix. Now, before we started, I went up on the uh, Drudge and a few other news sources to see some stuff, and I have to thank millennials. Yes, there is finally something to thank millennials for. Actually, two things. There's two things off the top of my head that I want to give a sincere thank you to millennials. Number one, vinyl. They brought vinyl back. Yep, the, the millennials, they brought vinyl back. So that's awesome. Number two, number two, they helped bring hard liquor from the brink. There was a point where hard liquor sales started to decline. But then these some bitches started to get a little bit depressed. And now that shit's back on the upswing. Number one on that shit is, uh, which one was it? Smirnoff? Hold on. I'll tell you. I'll tell you right fucking now. Uh, let's see here. Millennials boosting sale of liquor. They have been boosting. Let's see. Says here, while young America people in America are said to be drinking less alcohol overall, a shift in their taste has helped the world's large spirit company, DGE, beat half-year earnings and sale forecast. In addition to showing a tapering in alcohol consumption among millennials, research has shown that demand for lager, 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 whatever beer shit, uh, has dipped, but they switched from beer and wine to vodka and tequila. Yes, yes, yes. Fuck, yes. I am not a beer drinker. I like hard shit. Says data from U.S. trade group, the Beer Institute, shows drinkers chose beer just 49.7% of the time. Down from 60.8% in the 90s so it's a 10 percent 10 percent drop right and let's go blah 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 it says scotch which i'm not a big fucking eh, whatever grew 10 percent yeah fucking bougie shit okay whatever and vodka sales were flat okay that's fine but let's see here Johnny Walker grew 10%. Tequila was up. Let's see. Um, I'm looking for more numbers here. Because they were talking earlier about a couple of brands that were doing really fucking well. Smirnoff Vodka. And they also make Bullet. Bullet whiskey. I'm not a big fan of Bullet, but they said they got a huge boost by millennials. So hey, millennials, good fucking job. Good fucking job. You know, uh, I'm I'm good with Irish whiskey. You like that Canadian shit in their job? I'm not a big Canadian whiskey. I don't like. I don't. I got a. I got a nice box of Crown Royale here for you, man. Right? That was your shit. Crown Royale and Bronx is uh, 
I think Bronx was motherfucking uh, Jack Daniels, right? If I'm not mistaken. So yeah, I thought that was uh, I thought that was some good news. I like to I like to throw some good news out. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. See, like tequila used to make me mad. It used to it used to make me. Arr. But now I don't know. I could drink tequila. I was down in Mexico, fucking shit up. I was like, fuck it, give me tequila. I don't give a shit. Now I don't give a fuck. I drink anything. You know, I prefer I prefer Irish whiskey. Then vodka. Uh, no, I'm gonna back that off. I prefer first and foremost rum. Yeah, rum. I think rum. Rum. I mean, shit. I could just turn around and grab, and there's a fucking bottle of rum here. So, rum tends to be my my go-to most of the time, followed by Jameson, and then followed by vodka. That's that's it. Those are the three. Those are my fucking three right there. Rum, whiskey, vodka. Da vodka. The vodka. Vodka is a is a good drink for me when I drink straight. I like the vodka. Vodka vodka straight. You know. Um. So you know that, that's what I like. And then I'll fuck with tequila. And then if I'm in a really crazy fucking mood. Which isn't like on my favorite list, but it's like fucking delicious, period, beyond belief, is my fucking absinthe. Woo! Yes, lucid. That's my drink. But it's so fucking expensive. I gotta, and I gotta be careful with it, to be honest with you. I gotta really be careful with that bitch, because absinthe, absinthe make you do weird shit. Yeah, absinthe. This is fucking delicious though. Cause I like I like uh tastes like licorice. It was, it was most of my videos in the very beginning. It was the um Oh my fucking hell. Come on, Rob. Here, drink your drink and think for a second. Oh, uh no, I can't fuck, I can't remember it. I can't remember it. Motherfuck. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Jägermeister. Yes, it's like a super Jaeger, and I like it. It's delicious to me. I like I like Jaeger. Jaeger is, I could drink a whole bottle of Jaeger and laugh. Like fuck, whatever. But absinthe, whoa, 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 that shit, hundred and hundred and twenty proof. Damn. Damn. All right. So we were going to talk about some conspiracy and some esoteric uh, shit. Let's let's get into it. So Richie from Boston, you know, Rich from Boston. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Rich from Boston. He's one of my uh, one of my favorite guys. Uh, he's fucking funny as shit. And uh, at the very beginning of the show, I pasted it into the fucking chat, I don't know if you guys fucking saw it, if you did, you did, ah, if you didn't, fuck it, who cares, I swear, that's how, that's how, uh, that's how fucking, uh, Richie from Boston is, that motherfucker just, don't give a fuck, that dude just, boom, and just goes for it, you know, um, Aftershock's good, Avalanche is good, I drink both of those, I don't give a fuck, but, um, so Richie, Reposted up this motherfucking dude's thing. He's this dude's in the numerology. He's into all kinds of woo woo, and uh, and the woo woo was getting a little uncomfortable for me because some of that shit he was pointing out. I was like, I see it, my lord, I see it. Oh man, that's spooky, and it has to do with tomorrow. The motherfucking the the, the big event. I got to be careful with shit I say because they're listening. Always listening. Even now, they're indexing this video, even though it's streaming live. And they're waiting for me to fuck up and say something that they can take me off 
the internet. So we're going to talk about some other shit, but we're going to talk coded, if you know what I'm saying. So the alternative of rugby here in America uh, has an event. And interesting enough, I've seen quite a few articles talking about flying little uh, buzzy things that are not supposed to be flying over certain types of events flying over this particular event in setup so much so that people are a little bit nervous because recall some of these uh habibis violent habibis uh have talked for a long time about you know big bada booms big bada booms bada bing bada bangs right that could be a payload that could indeed be a payload for the anti-rugby. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I know some people aren't going to watch that type of an, uh, a thing because neither one of their preferred um, choices are competing in these events. But people like to watch it regardless because of the entertaining commercials. So... A lot of eyeballs going to be on that uh, competition. And uh, we will see if the numerology guy is right. And if Richie, if Richie's posting is right. Because, you know, Richie was really impressed by this guy. And Richie said, fuck it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to talk about that. what's What's the topic? Okay. I guess yeah, some of you guys just wasn't getting what I was alluding to. So... I'm going to do like this. I'm going to do like this. I think I think that right there will keep it somewhat ambiguous from the snitchy snitches that need to get stitchy stitches. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because with all the stuff that's going on right now, you got to be careful what's being said and stuff like that. Because, you know, we can talk about alcohol, we can talk about fucking, we can talk about all kinds of crazy shit. But the minute we get a little specific about conspiracies and stuff, uh, not really in the right mood for conspiramormal today as my day was oopoo. Well, sorry, Tinch. You go ahead and... Uh, Maybe go drink a little bit, squeeze one off in the corner. That's usually what I do when I'm uh, bummed out. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, going on. The real question is, why would... What? How did it? How would it pop up before I type? Doodly 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 doodly. Later, Tench. Anyway, uh, so the real question is, what would be achieved if that competition is uh crashed? Is is a uh, is fucked up. So now we can get into esoteric stuff because esoteric stuff doesn't seem to be uh, flagged as much. What's up, Stevie? Stevie G, man. Good to see you. I uh, wish you weren't at the hospital again, but, uh, you know. Ooh, careful, Brian. That's that, that one right there, Brian. That will get me knocked off super fast. That's a big one. That's a big one. Same with the alternate to the sphere. That those those two topics boom knocked off of the fucking YouTube almost instantly. Those are the ones that have an algorithm. 
They're look for those specifically because I think enough people are talking about it. Okay, Steve. Enough people are talking about it that it must be something to it. Exactly. The cube. We're talking about the cube environment. Then crust pizza. Exactamundo. But we can talk about the, the really crazy woo-woo stuff that they just think, oh, as soon as anybody says it, it's so fucking crazy no one's going to believe it. So here we go. When we go down a rabbit hole, let's fucking go down a rabbit hole. Follow the white rabbit. Okay. How's that for some fucking synchronicity? Oh, shit. I just realized my, my angry jackalope's actually white, too. It's been there all along. What? Okay, here we go. A lot of what we see are complete lies. A lot of the technology that we see are given to us. The things that people call demons uh, aren't necessarily called that. And I think it's interesting because Chris from Prepared Mind 101 just dusted off his old channel, Meaning of the Esoteric Minds. And he touched on this a little bit. He calls them lower uh, lower dimensional beings or lower density beings. Um, which is a really, really, really good descriptor, by the way. I actually, when he said that, I was kind of like, I like that. I like that. Because when you talk about densities, you're talking about... Uh, you're talking about things that are affected by harmonics differently than we are. So off phase, different dimensional beings, things of that nature. And that is definitely an interesting thing because you've got people historically that have channeled and spoken to demons, right? Um, that got information that benefited them uh, building weapons and things of that nature. So we've had accounts of Nazis interacting with uh, other beings. And some would say they're aliens, but I would say probably not from the direction most people are thinking. Most people think they come from there. I tend to think they come from there or here, right here, like here. Just not in the same here as we're feeling, as we're experiencing. Off phased, different dimension. So we occupy the same space, but we're off phase. So it's kind of like passing through each other. So that's where apparitions and ghosts and things of that nature come from. Because a lot of times what's happening is there is something um, with ley lines or power grids or something else that is causing a temporal disruption that is allowing something off phase to come into focus, even if it's for the briefest of moments. And that's not all of things. It's just some of the things. Okay. But the ones that are intelligent, that are aware of us, that are interacting with us. Those are the ones that I always found interesting because as I went through uh, the occult libraries and books and things of that nature, one thing always struck me as odd. When you're binding a demon or controlling a demon or whatever, there's a phrase where, you know, we've all heard the, uh, the exorcist thing that says uh, the spirit, um, what is it? The spirit of, uh, what is it? Spirit of Christ or the blood of Christ or something. Let's see the spirit of Christ. Yeah, spirit of Christ compels you, right? Spirit of Christ compels you. Spirit of Christ compels you. And... I always found it very interesting that when you do binding spells and things of that nature, that sometimes you're evoking uh, Jesus Christ into that, that spell. I always felt that was interesting. You know, I always thought there was a piece that was missing out of this grand puzzle. And then as I sat and pondered this shit, it occurred to me that... A lot of the words we use on a regular basis has other meanings to it. So 
as we go about our regular day and we say certain things, we are subconsciously, unknowingly casting spells. All right? I, in my book, made a joke, and the more I think about it, I'm thinking it's probably not a joke. So you see a lot of people crossing themselves, right? You see them crossing themselves. You see Catholics do it a lot. So here's the interesting thing. You're hitting your mind. You're hitting near your heart. Shoulder, shoulder. Okay. In magic craft, you could almost say that's like a um, like a spiritual binding. Okay. You you're putting blocks from your chakra. Okay. Your chakra comes from your second brain, which is your your stomach, and a lot of your your chi comes from here and goes also through down. Um, and for for guys, uh, there's a thing called a, a sacred secretion, which is basically your love juice, for lack of a better expression. Have you ever noticed after love making? I'm being I'm being a little bit on a, a a nicer side here because this is actually somewhat serious. But have you ever noticed after love making you're exhausted? Men, not women, men. Um and furthermore, have you ever noticed there's in there there's some research where they show that a woman's blood type uh changes and shifts to match the man the longer that she's with him. And they say it's kind of cool because if you're with somebody long enough, uh, they become more susceptible for organ transplants, right? Well, that's because we're dumping so much of our sacred secretion up in them. So they are genetically shifting to us. Um, it's because we are giving our our chi, our, our essence. That's why they tell, they tell fighters before a fight, don't have sex. You, you you have all the sex you want after the fight, but while you're training, getting up to the fight and everything else, no sex. It's because you lose. You lose something. You know, there's some guys that I know, they abstain, which I'm like, oh, fuck that. They abstain from sex because they realize they're giving away something that is super, super valuable. And then things like alcohol and all this other stuff, it just goes in our body, pollutes our body, and fucks with our chi. And I understand and I know that, but I'm such an addict. I'm like, eh, fuck, whatever. I like to fuck and I like to drink and I'm not going to change. But if I wanted to be the ultimate human being that I could possibly be, then those are two things super easy I could do to get in that that zone to be um, closer to perfection, right? Uh, you see people like Jim Carrey, he got exposed to this information as well as I would believe other insider information. Because you know what? Let's just be blunt. The, the, the power that be, the ones that are running around doing all the evil shit, well, you know they believe in magic. You know they believe in magic. They believe in sex magic, blood magic. Uh, they believe in doing horrible, horrible things to um, to to uh, the most vulnerable of society, and they basically feed on them like a you know, like a parasite, all with blood magic, and that is the reason for 90% of the horrible shit that happens in the world. Not because of these fuckers, but because who they serve and who they're working with. Okay? All the wars. So when you see military and they're wearing emblems and stuff like that, the stars and stuff, those are mass sacrifices. They're sacrificing those people. They don't care which side's winning. They don't care because any sacrifice is is blood magic, fear magic. It's the things that these lower density beings love. These uh, shadows, 
shades, the darkness is what I call them. The darkness feeds on our misery, feeds on our perpetual fear, feeds on all of this negativity. That's that's what they like to eat. That's their feed. They, they feed on it. Like they might be something, if we could see things for what they are, we would see things attached to us, feeding off of us. It would probably go nuts. And if you look, that's where motherfuckers like um, H.P. Lovecraft was alluding to with the madness. He was like, if you could see the real horrors, then you would you would be blown away. If you uh have ah, your sacrifices. Yeah. Um CPAP just checked out, changed my life. Uh, me too. I actually have a CPAP. I have a I have a CPAP now. Um So HP Lovecraft with Cthulhu and stuff. So now you look at some of these, some of the art and literature and some of the things like that, and you look around the world, there's a lot of very similar large ancient uh, monsters. Let's just call them monsters. That way we can use that as a code word. So that way we don't trip off any, any of the alert systems. Now, they tell us some of the oldest civilizations walking around on the planet were like Sumerian... Uh, etc. I would postulate there were probably some before that, even further back. And I would even further say that we as human beings are and have always been slaves. <laughs> Brian, I just sacrificed to the John Crapper God. Yeah, I did that earlier. Um, so the Genesis, the meaning of all of the evil and horrible shit, you sexy man, <laughs> stop it. I would postulate that all the evil, all the horrible shit that happens in the world today is basically by design. It's, it's. It's cultivated, encouraged, and then they're like, go for it. They, they enjoy the shit. It's all to keep us in the dark. So all the space travel, all this other stuff. You know, I like that acronym for NASA. Never a straight answer. You know. That's right. Kaijus. You know, Kaijus, Yukais, all of those. Oh no, Rob, not the sexy voice this stream. What do you mean? You want to talk about this? This sexy voice right here. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's like you got to be positive. You got to, because guess what? There's only one thing that will, will defeat the, the darkness. It's very simple, guys. There's only one. Because check it out. I could take, I could take a gun. Take a gun. Right? Well, I can't shoot them. We can shoot each other. Me and you, we can shoot each other, but you can't shoot these things. Hmm. Okay. Well, we can't shoot them. Can we tickle them? Yeah, in a way we can. They don't like the light. And the light, for, for lack of a, a, a better explanation, is love. When we are kind to each other, we help each other out. We do things for each other selflessly. Because here's the kicker. If you do shit for somebody, but you're expecting something for it, so you're like, oh, hey, um, hmm, I'm going to give this to you. Yeah, oh, yeah, you like that. Yeah, okay, good. You like that? Yeah, all right. Now you owe me something, right? You owe me a favor. Aha. Uh, -huh. uh, guess what? I just, I just served them. I didn't help myself. I fed those fuckers. 
They probably got fat as fuck living on me going, ooh, he's so, ooh, look like at this machinations. Ooh, he's so manipulative. He's my favorite snack. <laughs> That's. And then we wonder, oh, why do I got a headache? Oh, why do I hurt so bad? Oh, because they're shit actively eating us. They're feeding on us. Let's see here. Don't forget the number two pencils. We're taking, is that for a test? That's the only time I need a number two pencil. So I take a test. And I got to color the bubbles in right. You see the most evil thing every day when you look in the mirror. Ah! I'm not evil. I'm not evil. I'm not necessarily good evil uh, either. Right? That's that's part of the problem, guys. You can't you can't if you walk around labeling everything, oh yes, John Wick. Yes, the pencil. I get it now. I understand the pencil. Look, if you walk around, you say, I'm a good person or I'm a bad person, well, you're gonna be that person, right? So you can walk around saying, I'm a good person, I'm a good person, I'm a good person. Okay, fine. You convinced yourself you're a good person, but it's much better to do this instead. What would I like to improve about myself? What What's something I, I don't like about myself? What What is it? Well, you know, uh, I'm carrying a little extra weight. Okay, well, work, at, work out, fucker. Ah, I don't want to do that. Well, then it doesn't bother you that much, right? Find little things around you that need to be improved and make those changes if it's yourself great if it's fucking a piece of trash on the ground outside fuck that works too you know bottom line is we all share this fucking planet we all live on it together it's kind of like we're all in a house if one person's littering up the whole fucking entire house it makes the whole house shitty so if we all kind of work with each other to keep the house good, then it's good. Now extrapolate that out even further. We were talking physical trash. Well, now there's also emotional trash. Somebody's being an asshole, screaming and yelling at, you know, at some fucking dude in a checkout line for no fucking reason. You're like, dude, relax. We're all we're all waiting in line. We're good. We'll get out of here, bro. It's all good. You know, he might just need to hug it out. He might need somebody that actually cares about him so he goes oh it's amazing when shit like that happens you know um brian says john wick 3 looks great except for holly berry being in it you know she might be wackadoodle but she's hot so i can see why she's in it um what you hate in others is what you hate in yourself that's actually pretty true that's true. Or, or more specifically, what you fear in others is what you fear in yourself. Like I see a lot of dudes that, you know, they're no, yours is better. Yours is better. Yeah. Uh, nope, Brian, we can't. I'll tell you why we can't all get along. Because here's here's the problem. Human beings are broken. So here's the thing. Me and my daughter, we had a great conversation. In fact, the conversation went so good that I ended up telling her that's going to be part of a storyline that I'm working on. Because we were talking about utopians, utopian societies, right? Really, it's it says that? That's fucking stupid. I fucking changed that right before I came in here. I don't know why the fuck that still says that. Anyway, fucking ignore it. I'll fix it later. Um, thank you for that. Uh, so we're we're all broken because you know I was trying to tell her. I said there there's experiments that they've done with different things. They've done it with animals. They've done it with actual human beings, where they create a utopian society where. You don't have to work. You don't have to do anything. Everything you need, all your base needs are covered. You got food, you got shelter, you got water, you have sex, you have everything you fucking need, right? And they did an experiment with mice. I can't remember what it's called. They just call them the beautiful mice. But 
suffice to say, the mice went fucking nuts. Some didn't eat, some just sat and groomed themselves all day, and some just got aggressive and started fighting and doing all kinds of crazy shit, right? So we see that in the, in the regular animal kingdom. Well, they've done shit like that with human beings, too. They've done experiments. Like the, the one that comes to mind is the Pruitt, uh, Pruitt, Pruitt Igo, I think it's called, uh, experiment. They did it in Chicago. They took a bunch of kids. Uh, let's see here. Hang on a second. I'm on desk, so I get these alerts, and I got I actually have to do this real quick. So let me see. Um, let's see. Nope. Nope. <clears throat> That's it. Let him know. I didn't forget it. I just haven't. I was going to do this first and didn't do that. Um, so they took these uh, projects. They made these super nice complexes. And they took a bunch of folks that were like super poor, put them in there. And they had these weird rules and all this other stuff. And they monitored them. They, they filmed it and they watched them. And it was like really illegal shit. I mean, super fucking illegal. But what they found was the people went nuts and started destroying the environment and all this other stuff and this was shit that you know they were given basically for free you know it is and it's funny because we see that time and time again i mean you keep giving motherfuckers shit and you think oh that's going to inspire them to get back on their feet and blah 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 really the thing that's missing when people have problems is purpose and when people don't have a purpose they start to downward spiral. They start to do crazy shit. If you look at every genocide that has happened where you see a poor population rise up and do crazy shit, it's because they have no purpose. They have nothing that they're doing. They're just kind of sitting around fucking beaten off with nothing to do. And uh, so somebody comes along and says, hey, let's go fucking kill these other guys and blah, blah, blah. I'm simplifying this, obviously. But it's you see the shred of truth in all of this. So you can even see it with men. We get to a certain age, we go to retire, and then shortly after retirement, motherfuckers drop dead. Because they have no fucking purpose. Man, mankind, requires purpose. And if there's a lack of purpose, we wither. Why? Because we're doing something counterproductive to what we were designed for. We were designed to be slaves to do work when we don't have that we go fucking nuts and that's why human beings are f inherently flawed and that's why we can't all get along because the minute we get to any kind of a utopian society the lack of purpose is going to drive us bananas also greed the average motherfucker wants something you give it to them they want more you give it to them they want more give it to them they want more very rarely do you come across a person who is happy at a certain point and does not covet what somebody else has very rarely usually those people are in a little bubble they're away from the rest of the world so they don't know about that shit because if they knew about it they'd fucking want it you could have a billionaire okay fucking billionaire have anything in the world he wants he sees a shirt that somebody's kid made for him he asked the other guy hey let me let me buy that shirt off of you and the guy's like nah man my kid fucking made this for me you're like, well, I fucking want it. You know who I am? You hear that a lot with, like, super rich people. You know who I am? It's like, I give less than a fuck who you are. Oh, yeah, you're a rich motherfucker who thinks, you know, you got more money than God. I actually do have more money than God. I want that shirt. Okay? No. Okay. Well, 
What were we talking about earlier, Ryan? John Wick. They fucked up. Homeboy wanted Homeboy's car. He wanted you want to sell a car. They went and took the car. Oh, they done fucked up. They done pissed off John Wick. But my point is, that's that's we look at that storyline and we don't say that that's far fetched. We don't say, Jays. That's not in the realm of possibility that somebody who has a lot of money in the first place would resort to violence to take something. He has money. Why would he has so much? Yes, but he wants more. That's my point. It's insanity. It's insane because human beings are inherently broken. And once you realize that you're broke, right, then everything else kind of makes sense. And you're like, okay, all right, let me figure out how to work with this. It's kind of like, okay, uh, let's say I have a knife, okay? So I sit and I look at this knife and I go, you know what? This is a beautiful knife. It's really pretty, blah, 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 but it has an inherent flaw to it. There's no, there's nothing locking this, this part right here in place it, it doesn't lock it's that's uh that's was, why would you what okay yeah i'm holding it here but look it's still got it's very uncomfortable it's got a plate i'm scared it's gonna flip back and cut my hand okay first of all it's pretty impossible to have to tear all the way through my hand but from a mental point of view it still feels scary right okay i understand the flaws or the perceived flaws or the, you know, the lack of a safety or whatever in here. So now that I know that I know the proper way to use this, make this more efficient, make this a better operating thing or whatever, or if I'm really, really, really super fucking freaking out over this, I could wrap it with something, right? I can wrap it thereby turning it into a fixed blade and I wouldn't have to worry about it. It's the same thing with us. Once you realize that, okay, I'm not perfect. Guess what? Nobody is. Okay, well, I want to be perfect. Guess what? That's fucking impossible. Okay, well, I would like to do this. Okay, I'd like to fucking fly, but I can't. Understand. Set your expectations correctly. If you're like, fuck it, I'm going to be Bill Gates, fine. You could try. You could go for it. You could do what you need to do to try to get there. But understand. Very, very few people ever reach that pinnacle and even fewer reach that pinnacle without selling their soul. I'm not talking like you're signing a piece of paper to the devil or anything else. I'm talking about you're literally in bed with other motherfuckers that are going to fuck you hard. Hey, honey, buddy. My wife's on here. She knows I'm talking about. Look at all these fucking rappers and musicians and shit like that. You know what? Most of the motherfuckers that got to the top, they had to suck some dicks. So, not necessarily something I'm lining up to do, but you know what? I don't knock them. You're at a Jay-Z fucking level. Jigga jigga suck a dicka. So, you know, whatever. But uh, it's it's the shit, man. That's the, the nature of all the evil that is out there is connected to these lower density entities that in my mind are technologically more advanced than us and have been biding their times coaxing us along and ask for shit like CERN see that's I was just talking about that babe I was just talking about that I was using the analogy of sucking dick for that <laughs> that's yes it's true look I know a shit ton of fucking rich, rich motherfuckers. I'm talking multi, multi fucking millionaires. And regardless of the fact that they like me, they think that I'm funny, they like my ideas, they don't invite me into their inner circle, obviously, because they're like, yeah, Rob's fucking funny, but Rob's got a big fucking mouth. No, can't bring him in. He gets it. He understands. He understands the shit that has to happen sometimes, but no, can't bring him in. Mm-mm. We can't bring him in. 
All right, Backwoods, you be safe, brother. Keep your head on a swivel. You know what I mean? Spoon will keep it grinding. You'll get better. There you go. Hang on. Let me double check my fucking email because I switched it over to the other one. Sometimes when I do that, I don't get the emails that I need to keep an eye on because I'm on desk for the next eight, nine, a little less than two hours. And after two hours, starting tomorrow, I go on my graveyard shift. So yeah, so anyway, in a, in a, in a nutshell, the clusterfuck that we find ourselves in as far as being human beings is because the powers that be these motherfuckers practicing dark magic and things of that nature they understand the reality around us where we don't know shit we are basically little sheep walking around going Meh. right they know what's going on they bound us they have a shackle they have us with our little Markers and shit. They have us bought and sold our death certificate, life, uh, birth certificate, death certificate, marriage certificate, you name it. Lot like we're we're cattle. They know every little thing. They got senses. They know how big the herd is. So now I was talking with a buddy of mine earlier. Now they're at the point with AI and everything else coming along. They don't need the vast majority of us. We're fucking air breathers. If you look at the Georgia Guidestone. It tells you clear as day. How many motherfuckers do they want to kill? Well, let's do the math, shall we? The Georgia Guidestone calls out 500 million global population. We're at 8 billion. 8 billion. That means they want to kill 7.5 billion people that's very difficult that's a difficult number that's a lot of motherfuckers dying well shit here in america you know there's a couple of things that they're doing right now one over in the uh, northwest of america right now we're seeing an influx a huge spike not a huge but they're making it sound like a huge spike of um Oh, what's that shit called? I was just talking with you about it, babe. Uh, it's, um, is it measles? Is it fucking measles? Let's see. It was just, I just saw an article right in here earlier before I came on the fucking show. It was uh, talking about measles. Yeah, measles case prompt look at vaccination exemptions. Okay, so let's read the writing there. They're going to use that as a precursor to say look we're having these outbreaks because people aren't getting their immunizations we're gonna pass a law that says now you will get vaccinated there is no discussion it will be a legal thing right and so they'll do that and people will be like okay yeah you know because people are getting measles and blah 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 okay climate change and nuclear war can destroy most of the world's humanity sadly and they are both now with us. Yeah, but then it fucks the environment. They don't want to fuck the environment because they want it for themselves. If you look at Agenda 21, they want to keep the natural, uh, pristine nature of the planet. They want to fear monger everybody to think that our planet is a complete fucking Blade Runner, dystopian, non-breathing environment. But you can go outside and look and people can remember the 70s. You remember the 70s in L.A.? The 70s in L.A., you couldn't breathe outside then. Smog was so fucking prevalent, so bad. Gee, it's not like that now. I can look at pictures of L.A. right now. Obviously not after the big fires and shit. But, you know, during a reasonable time, not bad. Not bad. Okay. Uh, guess what? The planet repairs itself quite nicely. But you know how they will kill the vast majority of us? very easy in america they keep going for the guns oh we're gonna take your guns we're gonna take your guns oh i'm gonna take my guns oh don't take my guns okay so 
people like me go, oh no, they're gonna take my guns. And then I buy more bullets. See those little orange boxes back there, right there, right, right back there. Those are mini slugs. Okay, they they're gonna uh, keep fearmonger, fearmonger, fearmonger. We keep buying, keep buying, keep buying, keep buying. Then they'll flip off the lights, go hide in the bunkers, wait a year. Imagine what happens in America when the lights go out. There's no government, nobody to save you. Blah blah blah. And you have no power running in America for one fucking year. What's the death projection? Anybody? Anybody got a guess? They've done research on this. There's there's public reports that say what happens if an EMP hits or you get a, 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 a solar flare that pops out, critical infrastructure, power grids, blah, blah, blah. Conservative estimations in America is a 90% death toll. Oh, whoa, look at the brains on Mrs. Yakalope and Machete. Nut job, yes, 90 to 93%. No, you won't have 100% because some of these cocksuckers are going to be hiding out, and I'll be still around. I'll still be here because I am a super cockroach. Mm -hmm. So, then once that happens, they'll come through and clean up. And whoever is still down for the re-education and everything else can be part of that new world order. And they just do the same thing. In Venezuela right now, everybody is fixated on the fact that there's this regime change that's going on. But what they're not talking about is there's soldiers right now in a lot of the rural towns going through and killing. They're killing young men. They're just going through, dragging young men outside, shooting them. There are SOS radio broadcasts right now. Some of these poor fuckers down there are pleading and begging to get help. And they're just going door to door and they're fucking killing people. Who's doing it? The government and the military. So people ask, you know, the people that aren't aren't with the guns, you know, they go, oh, why do you need a gun? We, we. Well, because when they do come to try to A, either take, which I don't think that's, I don't think that's going to happen. Or when the lights go out and it's dark, right? Oh, wait, that's not what I wanted. Oh, that's what good too. Whatever. Oh, why do I have lights everywhere? Oh, I have lights everywhere because I'm just waiting for the lights to go out. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, see, buffering. They're probably not happy about the shit I'm talking about. See, I try to talk in code, but there's certain things you just can't talk about in code. So, anyway, that ends the first segment of the show. And, uh... Normally, this is time I jump on over to the uh, Robert or Rick side, but you know what? I think what we'll do is we'll stick it out here, and what I'll do instead is we'll go ahead and we'll do uh, a spin. We'll do a spin. Let's liven the shit up a little bit. We'll, we'll kick it up nicer for the second half, all right? Let's kick it up kind of nicer on the uh, second half here. Everybody that wants to be part of the spin, right, uh, say, say here. We'll just say here. Just type in the word here. And then that way I know who wants to be part of the spin. Oh, yeah. Let's do a spin, spin, baby. And while you guys are doing that, I'm going to eat another piece of cheese. Because I'm a mouse in a wheel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to do a spin tonight. Mm-hmm. Looks like Gene uh, Roddenberry's Star Trek optimistic vision of the future is an unrealistic and unpredictable one. The truth, the reality is far too darker to support such an uh, idealized dream. Yeah, the, the, the whole Gene Roddenberry stuff was to promote a agnostic um, point of view, was to push it in a different direction, to push people away from spiritual parts. Um, oh, Nikki's naked! Yeah! Go, nutjob!
get a different kind of nut job. Did I just fucking say that? I did fucking say that. Sometimes I just gotta go, what the fuck? All right, so we're gonna flip this display around. Blam! Just like that. And I'm gonna bring this guy up. And uh, what we'll do is we'll pull it like this. Uh, and then what we'll do is we will go over here. All right. So we've got some. Um, yeah, I like how you said she's fucking naked. That's just great. Um, let's see here. All right, so we got uh, Wolfbird, Bronx, Garen, Paula, Vixen, Brian, Yak, Bear, uh, Lira, Lira Lope, Garen, it's again. Nut job is out. All right, so let's see what we got. You guys went. Yeah, big time. Big time, Brian. Um, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, <laughs> oh fuck so we got 10 hang on a second I gotta see what this alert is see how annoying this shit is okay let's see and looks like this was just okay this is auto close awesome okay i was looking at like 10 it looks like uh so we'll just say 11. we'll just say 11. so we'll figure out if anybody fucking won anything anyway all right so we got autograph bookmark 11 okay all right, so we got 11. Let me update this guy real quick. I'll just say 12. So that way if we land on a magic number 12, we will um, we'll do something special. So number nine. Okay, so number nine, I'm going to start from the top here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. Lira Lope. Everybody agree with that? I think that's correct. I don't see anything up above here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, there's nine. So Lira is the winner. Lira Lope. Autograph bookmarks. Blam. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner on that one. You know, we'll do one more. Fuck it. We'll do one more just to kind of, just to kind of positive things. You want to be nice and happy. You want to be, you know, super duper. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go with the, we'll go with the low spin. Oh, 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 stop, 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 stop. Oh, you fucking whore. You fucking whore. Oh, my fucking hell. That's hilarious. Oh, my fuck. All right, we're going to try one more fucking time. One more fucking time. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Fuck. All right. Well, two two bookmarks. Okay, so we'll do another bookmark. I tried. Dude. I fucking tried. Now, if a twelve comes up, that's gonna be a separate thing. Oh no, it's a number eight. So that one. Let's see. Eight. All right. Let's do this here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bear. Okay, bear. What did you notice? 
What came up before I typed it? Oh, you guys do realize. Okay, so chat, chat is uh, uh, kind of real time, and the video is delayed by almost thirty seconds. I see what you guys are saying here now. I see what you guys are saying. So this one is uh, bear auto grout. Yeah, you guys are kind of, kind of freaking me out for a second there. I was like. What the fuck are you guys talking about? It's like ah, because this is a uh, is um almost a real time versus what we see on the screen here. The screen is a little bit different. All right, so uh, one thing I'm going to show you guys is um, let's see. I had told you guys before I was working. Ah, here we go. I was working on a couple other books. Yeah, somebody other than you and uh, Paula, Garen. Totally. Um, I told you guys I was uh, doing some stuff to keep myself kind of organized and whatnot. And so one of these things is right here. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I also... Yeah. Yep. I kept these up. So I have this, um, I have this, uh, series that I'm putting out called experience life, right? And some of you, some of you old time viewers might recall this, uh, before, because some of the story times that I used to do in the, in the past was part of the experience life, uh, stuff, you know? Uh, so this one is called the task killer. Okay. So I, I set out with the goal of putting together kind of a, a task list that I could use every single day that wasn't like regular daytime planners. And so what I did is I made this. So this has a bunch of the tasks, due dates. I assign the experience point level to it, and then I just track when it's done. And then when this sheet is finished, I just kind of tally up my experience points. And then I write some notes and stuff like that. And, you know, I keep, uh, I put this in a book format so it's easier for me to kind of trek it around. And so, you know, there's like different, different pages and whatnot. So I put that one out uh, for people that are interested in it. And then the other one I put out that launched today was this other one here i'll show you the cover on that one too i'm actually really thrilled with these covers they came out really cool so this one is also part of the experience life series but this one is an author's workbook and this is how i keep uh all my stories kind of uh together so right now i have over 57 books in development and they're in different journals and on the computer and stuff like that and so what I did is I just created I'll give you a preview I created uh, this system here so you know you just kind of write your idea down who what when where how why Wow and then you just have your little character sheets that you put together for different characters that way it will see there's like five of these for every one so there's enough inside of one book to have 60 novel ideas so you could have 60 ideas in one little book and so that's what I'm using right here and I have people from time to time ask me, how do I do things? How do I keep things organized and things of that nature? And this is the answer. So if people are kind of, you know, wanting to emulate and follow the same stuff that I do and keep their shit organized, those are going to be available. So anyway, I was happy because these launched today. So these will start kind of filtering out and around. And then as time goes on, I'll do things like I'll deep discount them and stuff like that. But I just wanted to share with you guys because this was actually something that was kind of cool. Uh, something I really am proud of that I finally got out. Because these were some of the things I set out last year to get done for this year. And I got it out. And I mean, the fact that 
you know, they've got barcodes and everything else and uh, are available. These will filter out. These will eventually be in like, um, what do you call it? Barnes and Noble, Amazon, all the online stuff. You'll be able to uh, buy it from all the online uh, bookstores and stuff like that. Whether or not it ends up like in Barnes and Noble and things like things of that nature, you know, I don't know. I guess if there's a, a big enough demand for it, uh, then it is. The other thing that I'm super thrilled about is I have a new logo uh, for my publishing company, Rhymas Publishing. So you guys know I have uh, an affection for jackalopes. So that that carried through here and so there it is and eventually the the full book for experience life in it to win it will come out i'm still working through a lot of stuff on that there's some topics in there like the human soul and a bunch of other things that is it's a little harder for me to make i kind of want to make sure i get it right and i keep kind of shifting my my thinking so i can't locked down to myself exactly what I want so this will come out eventually but for now the tools that I use every single day I'll release those out and uh, make them available for people and shit like that so anyway I want to share that with you guys some of you guys have already been seeing some of the the progress we've been making on uh, shirt designs and things of that nature uh, those will be popping off um, pretty soon uh, the book also has shipped for people who pre-ordered the um, Magic Really Sucks stuff. So those will be uh, hitting people pretty soon. Just do a blade spin. Uh, look at my wife. Well, you know, I do have... I do have the prize wheel already queued up here. We could do one. We could do one. But you know what? Matt's here now, and he won a blade. So, you know, if he wins another one, I think there's going to be a fucking riot. I think there'll be a riot. So, to be fair, Mr. Matt, if a blade comes up and you win it, you're going to have to, we're going to have to find somebody else, and then you'll just be entered in to win the uh you'll get some golden tickets so we'll do that hang on a second there's motion in front of my house let me see what it is real quick make sure i don't have somebody running up trying to kick the door in because if they do come up they're gonna have a little shotgun waiting for them oh no is this a car driving by okay all right so let's do this let's go ahead boop, 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 and let's spin a prizey prize here we go and boom! Ooh. Yeah, no, can't do the domo pop. Can't do that one actually. You have to do a different thing. There's a couple things that have already been won, so if those pop up, they're just gonna have to be golden. Ooh. Ooh, that's a death wish patch. Okay, you know what? We're gonna do two out of three. I mean, uh, one out of three. Sorry. One out of three. Look at that. That came up again. No domo. No domo. Yeah, you're outside. Keep me honest. Oh, look at that. You guys are like, stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop. All right, so this is actually a Magic Really Sucks book. That's good. We're going to keep that. We're going to keep this shit right here. We're going to keep that one. And uh, let's go ahead. And you know what we're going to do? Uh, since the, the, the group has shifted in here, just say here. I want to see everybody that's here. So I see that, for example, I know Ryan is here. Um, yep, Death Wish Coffee. Yep. So I'm going to have the Death Wish copy for, uh, I got a patch. I got a cool little patch for Death Wish and a sticker. So that's going to go to somebody and also a copy of the book. So I just need everybody inside of the, the chat to type here so I know who is here. And then that way I know how many to do on my, uh, my little spins here. Oh, yeah, Death Wish coffee is fucking amazing if you're not familiar with it, Brian. It's... 
Yum, yum, fucking yum. It's it's out fucking standing. All right, here we go. Starting to flood in. Here we go. Here we go. I picked a blade and just picked the number. Oh, well, fuck, babe. We could do that after. Jesus fucking Christ. Can't believe you want to do that. Okay, that's fine. There's a... Uh, uh fuck godless us everyone okay so all right well fuck so we're doing three we're gonna do three okay steve we're gonna do three uh three of these number spins here so i think we're good so we got one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven. Okay, so that's fine because I still have the twelve sitting up here. So boom, we're gonna hit it, and it's gonna go to number seven for the death, uh, death wish. Okay, Lyra, I will, Garen. Okay, so seven. So we got uh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yakalope's got the Death Wish patch. So, hang on a second. Yakalope, Death Wish patch and sticker. Okay, so now we're going to do for the book. That's going to number 11. Ah! Ah, you're fucked up, babe. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, so 11. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so Ryan. Ryan's got a copy of the book. And that one actually is the, uh, uh, that's the pre-release. Um, pre-release one. So that one's actually kind of cool. That's a, that's a, um, collector's edition. So it's not 100% current, but it is a very limited edition one, so that's cool. And then, for the knife to be picked, number five. Number five. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> there it is. Paula Lucky Lope. <laughs> oh, my fucking hell. Okay. Well... Oh, my fucking hell. Funny, funny, funny. Boom. Okay. Well, that was fucking interesting. <laughs> Holy fucking hell. Well, there you go. Just look. This goes to show you never know what the fuck to expect. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Funny, funny, funny. This shit is hilarious. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure, babe. They are th actually, you know, the fucking funny thing is the last time you were on here was a fucking epic. Was a fucking epic ass spin. It was fucking crazy. Holy shit. You and uh, Shadow Master, when you and Shadow Master are fucking here. The the sh the show just goes fucking bananas. That's that's what happens. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Yak. I'm telling you, the the luck, the luck. No, 
No, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no zombie tools. It's going to be one of them shred blades downstairs that's sitting in the box. There's there's boxes that are in the prize pile. You know, my wife has a lot of sway. Well, there ain't no fucking way she's going to come in and say, take that zombie tools right there and give it over there. I'll be like, yeah, you know, the couch sounds good. <laughs> Oh fuck! Butter knife. That's fucked up, babe. That's fucked up. <laughs> Holy shit! I can see her. I can see her walking around like this, going, "Hmm, hmm, hmm, hmm." And then it's gonna get me in trouble because she's gonna be like, "Okay, what's this worth?" I'll be like, "Uh, that's that's like that's like thirty-five bucks." Oh, okay. What about this one? Oh, that's two hundred dollars. You spent two hundred dollars on this? I'm like, fuck. <laughs> You're welcome, Brian. You're fucking welcome, brother. Oh shit! Last time when she was on the phone, I won my first time here. See, see, babe, I told you. So, see, sometimes when people come on and you fucking do your little woo woo. The motherfuckers get stuck and they come forever and ever and ever. Yeah, no, no. You know what though? I've done an M4X Punisher giveaway twice. I've done it twice. Well, definitely can't have the shark alone because that's not even mine to give. That's Angel's. That's her sword. Shark alone belongs to uh, belongs to Angel. The only the only ones that are mine <clears throat> are like these. So like this one right here. You know? So, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I got to get to find out how much of my income goes to play. Well, it'd be all old, old income because you know where all the income goes right now. All of this right here, all of that. <laughs> Which is why I'm pushing out these fucking uh, books and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think uh, I think Ryan had a general uh, general understanding of what the show was, but you know, sometimes when you get to the show and it's it's a uh, it's it's on fire and it's going. Oh, it's it's a fun thing. It's a fun thing. You guys are a lot of fun. I mean, I look forward to this shit pretty much all week as far as uh, the regular, you know, grind of the, the work week. And then I get to hang out with you guys and get fucking stupid. And then sometimes, you know, I even have a little bit more fun and, you know, drink. But the last few times that um, we've been doing these shows, I have to be responsible because I'm working. I'm working. Um, what about the zombie trauma hawk? Well, the trauma hawk is mine. Uh, it is one of my oldest, oldest, oldest ones. Uh, and it does have a very, very fond, uh, fond part in my, my, uh, heart. Uh, it's the sly steel on your jacket. I was wrong on the name. Uh, what was that? Oh, 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 the shark tooth, uh, shark tooth tactical. In the shark tooth hunter, I actually can get pretty good deals on those because me and uh, Oliver are pretty good friends. So sometimes, um, if you if you catch me right after I do a show with him, because sometimes I'll help him man the booth and I'll basically sell blades for him and stuff like that, and I don't take money from him. A lot of times he'll give me a blade, and if you catch me. When I get one of those blades, shit, I'll work something out with you guys. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? It's a good blade. Fucking super good. Like, he likes to take it and plunge it in ammo boxes and stuff. He's a fun guy, you know? And uh, I think usually the best time to hit me for stuff like that is uh, in the summertime because there's a show that he comes he comes over, you know? Oh, SHOT Show? SHOT Show was great. SHOT Show was really good. Uh, got to see... A lot of fun stuff. Um, one of the things that was really good was AA12. I got a chance to hold it up, 
mess with it, look at it, see it naked. Oh my god, that semi-automatic fucking shoddy is nice. And I've been doing a lot of research lately. You'll see right there is my KSG. So I've had the KSG. I was in here earlier loading her up and everything, getting her uh, ready to rock and roll in case somebody was dumb enough to come through a fucking uh, door. Um, that's not a bad idea, Brian. My wife was actually hitting me up and saying, uh, hitting me up, I was reading the Acolypse thing. My wife was giving me shit not too long ago, a couple of days ago. She's like, when are you going to fucking do another video? I'm like, I know, I know, I know. I'm working on it. But um, that's not a bad idea. Actually, I still need to do a hard use on this uh, felon. So I will be doing that. Uh, I'm doing. I'm going to be doing another channel. That channel, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to make a penny on because it's all gun related. And uh, it's going to be shotguns uh, as a f primary focus. Uh, and the goal there is to get with... Um, tactical superiority as well as soul invictus and help them really 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 push that aa12 uh, i've been talking with those guys about kind of streamlining their manufacturing i've got a i've got a connection here who can really help them out and so their gunsmith and i have been talking on a regular basis uh, Evelyn, she's hitting the road. She's doing some other shows. Hopefully when she comes back, I can solidify the relationship a little bit more. I really, really, really want to, uh, for lack of better expression, get in bed with a, a with the AA 12. Like I really, really, I, I believe in the company Soul Invictus. I think they've got a really good, uh, fucking product. Uh, they've got good ARs. They've got good other fucking weapons that I want to fuck with. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, that's the, that's the KSG right up there. That's my KSG. <clears throat> Her name's Bertha. She's a bad bitch. Um, what the fuck? Anyway, um, I plan on grabbing some of the lower end. Holy fuck. Some of the lower end, uh, shotguns. The semi-automatic ones. Um, and then I'm also going to probably get a KSG uh, K7. And so that other channel is going to be all gun-related stuff. And I'll probably be hitting uh, Mr. Ryan up. You know, I'll probably be bringing him in on some fucking videos. He's a fun guy. Super fun. I think you guys would love him. He He's he's right up our fucking alley. I mean, he's a fucking madman. Um, no. I did not have a chance to talk. I have, I hinted to Craig over at Tops. I told them uh, I had some ideas that could increase revenue for them uh, on collectability stuff. You know, for example, so this was one of their blades and I modified it. So I added in, I'm going to have to fucking put this on, put this on vibrate. I don't want any more ring because I know that's ear rape for you guys. There we go. Uh, so if you look at this, so I modified it by adding in acrylic on the inside to make those channels pop. But what would really, really, really make this bitch super pop is if I had colored screws to accentuate that, right? So even if I couldn't get screws to match this color, say I was able to get blue or I was able to get something else, right? Well, I would have changed the acrylic on the inside to match the accents of the screws. So I've got a contact here in Utah that is a manufacturer of screws, can do all kinds of different screws, different pieces, different parts and stuff like that, that I can get kitted up to allow me to make things like this even more custom. So, you know, that being said, I was telling Craig and I was telling Leo, look, guys, you guys already are making, you're already delving into collectability. You did it with the um, the tracker, and now you're doing it with the, um, the Texas Creek, you know, Texas Creek. Why not also start letting people like me, if you don't want to do it yourself, let motherfuckers like me bag up, kit up little aftermarket kits with screws, things of that nature, uh, handle scales, whatever, to make your blades even more customized. They didn't say no. 
Leo was like, here, give me the card. So I gave him the card. He called Craig over. He said, hey, Craig, let's talk more about this with Rob. So I'm hoping, the same as when I was talking before about the M4X, and I was talking about handle scales, and I was talking about all the other customizable pieces they could do, they slowly did it, and that allows us to really further customize our shit. I want to do the same type of thing with stuff like the KSGs. I want to get stuff, different bits and pieces, to further make them our own. Everything is black, tactical brown, tactical green. I want to start tricking these fuckers out with different colors, different accents, different pieces, and then that way people can really elevate that game a little bit further, right? So anyway, it's just some this is some thoughts, you know. Uh let's see, what is the chat saying here? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that, babe. No big deal. Wicked in the motherfucking house. Let's see, Rock Island makes some nice what yeah, they do. Uh there's a lot of good manufacturers out there that make great fucking gear. But normally I can't really do anything with it. I I wasn't doing it originally because I was so fearful of them fucking killing the channel, but I'm gonna make a different channel. This is still going to be the channel that's going to be knives, testing, pig heads, all that, you know, stuff that you guys have come to expect with the blades, the live shows, things of that nature. And then the spins and all of that stuff is eventually going to segue over to the Robert R. Ricks one. The only reason I keep it here is this has enough viewers that allows me to do the comments. That allows me to post up a picture and allows you guys to come behind and do stuff with. So I kind of had to keep it on the Angry Jackalope one. But eventually that's going to go over to Robert R. Rick stuff. So that's going to be over there. And then uh, the guns will be guns and everything is going to be where it needs to be. Okay. So I want to sell guns. I want to sell blades. I want to sell kits. I'm going to sell different things. I'm going to get into the business. And I've already cleared it with the wife. I already told her I want to be a Lord of War. To which she said, fuck, I don't care. Go for it. Okay. So that's going into 2019, into 2020. Um, I'm looking into getting my FFL license you know, FFL, which stands for a federal firearm license. And at that point, not only am I going to be able to get guys gear, if you guys can pass a, a background check and everything else, but I'll even be able to break certain things in. I'll even be able to, uh, uh, stress test blades, things of that nature. So, you know, the blade you get has been pressure cooked, has been brutalized. There'll be a video to show it. And then I'll take it back to the manufacturer and have them reprofile kind of like a blade that Yakalope's going to be getting pretty soon here. I brutalized the fuck out of it. It didn't break, but it got chipped a little bit. I gave it back to the manufacturer. Manufacturer is now fixing it. It'll be factory new again. But now Yakalope, when he gets it in hand, will know this blade is not going to break if I chop a motherfucker in the head with it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even Pee Wee Herman needs a knife. Make small handled knife. Exactly. You know what? It's not even Pee Wee Herman. We've got some uh, viewers here like um, uh, Vixen. Vixen's got really small hands. Because of that, she needs a blade that has smaller handles and things of that nature. So there's a couple of blades I've been looking at, such as the Lioness and a few others that I think probably will work for her hand size. But again, it's one of these type of things. As we keep going, I figure out all of the crew. I figure out what everybody needs. I figure out who's got what, who doesn't have shit. And then slowly but surely, I get all of the crew up to speed, up to snuff, up to where they need to be. In, re in regards to stuff like the Rhino, yes, I want a fucking rhino, and I might be able to work a deal out with uh, uh, a certain one-eyed jackalope uh, who's got two. And so he's talking about, uh, you know, maybe working something out with me. So I might have a fucking uh, rhino uh, in hand within the next three or four months. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Rob, Rob Ricks, the Lord of War, the King of Crazy. <laughs> Uh, be able to get silencers. Yeah, you can get silencers. They're kind of state to state. So that's the other thing. I'll be able to answer these types of questions. What's legal? What's not legal? Where can you get it? What's the rules with it? Uh, what will you need to do to protect yourself if you get a silencer and then you blow a motherfucker away after you had a silencer? Some states, no good. Here in Utah, I think we're pretty good uh, with silencers, but some of the laws have been changing a lot lately too. So, you know, we'll see. Um, let's see. Lord of porn, Nazi midget porn. No, 
No. No Nazi midgets, goddammit. Ugh. Fuck. Uh, wants a slingshot or a crossbow. Yo, oh, you know what? Uh, let's see. Yeah, you're, you're, you should, you're in Florida, so slingshots aren't a big deal. Uh, crossbows, I also think, are not a big deal. So, you're good. You're good. I got you on helping, uh, with little kids, survival, medical, etc. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, Lord of War. Yeah, Nicolas Cage. Exactly. Although, I'm not going to Sudan and other crazy fucking places. I've got a guy. He's down. He's like, dude, you got to send me Czech Republic. I'm down. Let me know what you need me to do. I'm, I'll go for you. I'm like, good, because I will send your ass over there, because I have no desire to go to certain places in the world. None. But I like their weapons, and I don't mind selling them. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, and so, yeah, so that's that's that. So at SHOT Show is great, because I got to meet... That's where it solidified in my mind because I was meeting these different gun makers and shit. I, I realized as I sat and talked with them and we were, um, <laughs> there you go. Nice. So Brian, Brian corrected me. Suppressors are a hundred percent illegal, uh, legal silencers are illegal in every state. There you go. Yeah, Bronx says here in New York, nothing's legal. I know that. I know that for a fact. So, but, you know, bottom line is as we get educated and we know who, who's who got our back and everything else, like there's some guys in the gun industry, they're fucking crooks. They're fucking dickheads. And uh, there's a couple of them I can't fucking stand. Like, I cannot fucking stand them. Um, but, you know, I'm pro Second Amendment. I'm not about giving an inch. I don't want to give an inch. I don't have an extra inch to give. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to like, oh, yeah, we're we're going to get rid of like bump stocks and things like that. I'm like, mm, no, fuck you. Mm -mm, that's bullshit. You shouldn't be able to take those either. You know, and it's funny because they talk this shit. But at the end of the day, there's always ways to circumvent, you know, and because they're stupid, they can't they can't think logically enough to actually write good laws they're fucking stupid uh you just have just have your tax stamp with your class 3 license with your uh, suppressor yeah there is a bunch of things you can do to protect yourself um some of that i i've read a little bit on but like i said there's a lot of homework i still got to do but the fun thing is i don't mind doing it because as i was meeting with these fuckers over in shot show i realized i like talking to these motherfuckers I like talking about shooting shit. I like actually shooting shit. I like being surrounded by guns everywhere. Guns. I like this. It makes me fucking happy. Right? So, um, before too long, I'll be selling shit. So, I'll be able to kit stuff up, help you guys figure out stuff. You guys have a budget. Help you guys figure out a budget. And uh, I'm even working on uh, a type of a subsystem for people to go back to the old school layaway model brought up to the you know current time period so people would be able to uh, get gear that they want, kit it up the way that they want, uh, field tested, fired, seasoned barrels, etc., etc., etc. So, you know, keep an eye out. That's going to be some stuff that's going to develop as time goes by and um i think that's just going to be a win-win for all of us you know what i mean um you never shot a gun before well i'll put it to you like this uh shooting a gun is like losing your virginity you're not going to forget it ever 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 because it is it is something else you either going to love it or you're going to fucking absolutely hate it there is like no real middle ground like yeah you either get addicted immediately or you're like oh my fucking hell i don't ever want to do that again that's what i've seen um let's see what it, what's going on here um wolf let's see what did i miss uh 
uh, get a suppress 22 Ruger for squirrel hunting. Nice. Um, just use male carton as a silencer like in the movies. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that's good for like the first shot and uh, the operative words there is movie. I've seen cans of beans and a bunch of other shit done in movies. It's always fun. Um, a good buy, uh, binary trigger is a must. Carry around a little throw pillows to use for silencers. <laughs> Feathers everywhere. Pillow catches on fire. Uh, let's see. What's the difference between a suppressor and a silencer? The effectiveness and the degree of silencing, or are they completely different arms technology? I don't know on that one. I'm not. I'm not educated enough to answer that question. Somebody else probably will. Um, just wonder. Wording wolf. Oh, just wording. Oh, I get okay. I see the answer there. Okay, uh, wicked pillars or suppressors, which is legal. There you go. Yeah, but fucking up your wife's pillow, not legal. You'll get in so much trouble. Don't do it unless it's a really ugly pillow and you have some replacements ready. Um, let's see. Thanks, Yak Wolf. The term suppressors makes it legal. The term silencer makes it illegal. Yep, yep. Just gotta start small. Exactly. Pew pew pew. I like shooting a rifle. Never shot a handgun, though. Yeah, depending on the handgun, it's it's a it's a different experience. Um, I prefer rifles all day, every day. Um, even my big old giant Mosin, I prefer that over the pistol. Uh, even though, you know, I've shot that Glock over two thousand times pretty easily. And it's like an extension of my hand at this point. But I do like, uh, as far as pistols are concerned, um, this Walther PPX in a 9mm uh, has been a real joy to shoot. Like, it's it it's not nearly as bad as that 27 subcompact Glock 40. Because that thing just boom, boom. And, you know, it's not like my wrists hurt or anything. It's just after a while, you start to get, uh, you start to get grip fatigue. Um, yeah, Matt, so that's the Mosin. The Mogan, Mosin is a bolt, bolt action rifle. And I really like that. It's a, it's a fun rifle to shoot. Uh, the story of the reporter who shot an AR and claimed PTSD. What a fucking pussy. That fucking, give me a fucking break. Give me a fucking break. Um, used to go white tail deer hunting with my ex. Never shot one though because the bucks are good hiders. Uh, does ev does everywhere thought but not allowed, but not allowed to shoot them. Oh, does everywhere but not allowed uh, to shoot them. Okay, yeah, I guess yeah, because again rules, right? The the slaves have to follow the fucking rules. Um. Irene says, I don't like the Glock. I know you don't. You're good on that first shot, though. On the first shot, when she's when she's using that, dead eye. That first shot, mm, she hits what she's aiming for. Every shot after that, I don't know. It, it, I think there's a warp that happens after. Um, Hitman officials, 22. Uh, hey, what's up, big man Bowie? <laughs> what's up brother let's see pistol is to get you to long gun I always look at my pistol as like <clears throat> I look at it two ways if I'm geared up and I have the pistol sidearm and I have the rifle and I'm I'm rolling with a rifle that's my preferred and I usually roll with the rifle my chest rig back there I have uh, six magazines on it plus the one magazine on the rifle so I have seven seven magazines. I don't run twenty. I don't run thirty rounds. I run twenty nine because that extra that sits in there when I hot swap. If I have one chambered, I I drop the magazine. So uh, I try to go with the rifle as much as possible. But if I have to stop and drop, then I go to the sidearm. And really, at that point, it's kind of a shitty position because now it's like, fuck. If I'm rolling with the Glock. Uh, that's only nine nine shots through most of the magazines as secondary, but only eleven on the primary. So that's kind of shitty. 
Um, the Walther PPX, I can get 16 on that, but eh, I don't know. It kind of sucks. The KSG back there, I can run 24 uh, mini slugs in that. Uh, what I like about that is I can alternate between uh, buckshot and slugs. Um, so you have some versatility with your ammo. But again, that bitch back there, she weighs. She weighs a fucking ton. But what's nice is because of the short form factor, you can actually shoulder it and handle it. But fuck, that bitch, when you're shooting her, she kicks. She kicks kind of hard. I need to get a muzzle brake for her. I think if I get a muzzle brake on her, she'll probably run a lot smoother. Um, what are you laughing at, babe? What the fuck are you laughing at? Uh, let's see. Illinois is trying to pass anti assault rifle laws this year. They all are. They they keep talking that shit, but I don't. I don't really think that's what's going to happen. Um, John Wick is yeah. I like John Wick. There's a guy out here that running guns. He can't stand John Wick. He he doesn't like the girl that trained uh, Keanu Reeves. Like he knows her really well. He's like, ah, fuck that shit. I'm like, dude, I was impressed with Keanu. I don't know what you're talking about. For an actor to fucking take that discipline, I was like, go, Keanu. You're the motherfucker. He's all, uh, whatever. And this guy's like a champ. So, you know, I give him his props. But I don't know. I was kind of like, that's not very champion-like to talk shit about somebody who has a love of the sport now. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, these fucking actors fucking up. I'm like, Dude, Hollywood is fucking Hollywood. Hollywood's bullshit. We all understand Hollywood is bullshit, but it's fun bullshit. You know what I mean? But uh, anyway, um, let's see. Jason Browse customized clocks. Oh my god. What Browse? Oh Browse. Okay, I know. Okay, I know you're talking about now. I I was thinking about somebody else for a second. I was like, what? Wait a minute, who? Uh, too bad nobody customizes Walters, but at least everyone customizes AR-15. See, that's my point. You just, you just made my fucking point right there. There are only a handful of pistols or firearms, we'll just go more generic, that get aftermarket love. That's lost money on a table. That's fucking... That's retarded to me. That is so much money just waiting. If, if, if somebody had customized pieces for the fucking, the lock, the disassembly uh, piece here, the trigger, what else can we do here? I mean, obviously, motherfuckers do sights all the time. But the hammer, even the hammer. If I could get the hammer done up, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's it's just coated bright red. You know what I mean? And I get this shit bright red. Oh, guess what? I got a Deadpool gun. I got a Deadpool gun. I got Deadpool. I got Deadpool for days, bitches. That's fucking, that's, that's hotness. That was one of the reasons that I actually liked the PPX was the two-tone. I thought the two-tone was fucking badass. I liked it. But again, we're seeing some of the manufacturers, uh, Taurus as an example, with their uh, Spectrums, that are actually understanding there is a segment of the market that wants customized firearms. They want their shit to match, I don't know, their fucking outfit, their car, whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. There's a market for it. And so I get frustrated when I'm like, fuck, like flashlights as an example. We see Olight from time to time release customized uh, housing units like during the holidays or whatnot. They'll say, oh, here's our Christmas edition, blah, blah, blah. And motherfuckers like me get all excited like, ooh, 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 they got a blue and a red one. I got to get it. I got to get it. And I get it. But if they had aftermarket motherfuckers doing it, holy shit, man. I'm telling you, there's, there's a fucking, there's a nice install base. So I like it. I don't know. Uh, let's see. And you have your shells custom with numbers on the back. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Fucking pull a shell out, look at a motherfucker, be like, oh, you know what? This is number three. So now you don't get in trouble because I'm not condoning premeditation, people. But we all have a shit list of people. So subconsciously, silently, we have numbers on our bullets. We can be like looking at a motherfucker and say, yeah, you're number three. You are number three, motherfucker. Right? 
you pop that motherfucker after the apocalypse and shit, and you go back and get that shell cases for number three and wear it like a necklace because you're happy as shit that the motherfucker that was a source of stress for decades and decades caught a bullet because the apocalypse came, and you're like, ah, fuck it. Civil law went bye-bye, so I don't have to not kill you anymore. <laughs> oh, shit. 44 automatic dum dumb rounds. Uh, buddy just picked up a 45 911 for 350. New loves it. Nice price, man. 350. That's great. I had a 40 cal Glock uh, with laser sights that got stolen. That sucks. I hope you reported that fucker immediately. Because the last thing you want is a motherfucker being like, "Hey, uh, your gun was used to kill a fucking bunch of nuns." Fuck. 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 Yeah, that shit got stolen. When? Two years ago. Man, you never thought to let us know. It was on my list. I just never got around to it. It wasn't high priority. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things, man, where uh, guns are just fucking amazing. You know, uh, Olight is great, and so are uh, True Knights. I wish there was True Knights with their power that had the aesthetics and ergonomics of the Olights. Yeah, exactly. You know, so that's the other thing, too. It's like uh, earlier I saw a sheath from um, – oh, we're going to have to cut this pretty quick here because I'm already an hour and 56 in here. we got four minutes left. Uh, I want to um, – there's a Red Hill – no, not Red Hill sheath. Oh, my God. I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, there was a sheath maker. They, they put a thing and it had like a leather man on it and some other stuff, and I was like, dude, I said, I got I to gotta holler at you, dude. I need a sheath made for my Inforex Punisher. But – we see sheath makers all the time. We see uh, scale makers all the time. But I want to start. Oh, stolen by a pawn shop owner. Fucker. I want to get. Uh, I want to get some shit going to customize the shit. So if somebody says, hey, I want a certain type of uh, gun, but I want it to be the Jackal of Red edition or something. Right. So like I already have pre-kitted out shit and then boom, you know, there it is. Uh, I'm a 6.5 and 10. Was that was that 6.5? What is that? Uh, oh, what's that shit called? Creedmoor? What is what is your 6.5? What is that? I know 10. I'm just trying to figure out what 6.5 is before I fucking go. Because there's certain there's certain things I'm still trying to get educated on. That's the other thing, too. You motherfuckers are going to have to help me on certain things. So when I fucking, uh, when I go and I run shit or I'm talking about shit, you know, if I misspeak, you fuckers correct me. Especially you military fuckers. You guys know some shit. Let a motherfucker know. Anyway, that's it, guys. We're going to end the show right here. I still got some stuff to do. I got uh, some shift change stuff as well as I have a, um, I have a report that I have to put together for my shift change that I got to do directly after this. The guy was kind of bugging me. He was like, Hey, uh, okay. Yeah. Six, five, more. Okay. Um, see, so I'm learning a little bit. Um, I actually want one of those. So anyway, um, so I can reach out and touch some, uh, North American animals. Um, so yeah, that's fucking hot. Mm-hmm. I can't, I got I got caught on stupid for a second. I'm like, oh yeah, that's nice. So anyway, we're gonna end it right now. As always, uh, I appreciate the fuck out of you guys for coming, hanging out. Shit, man, I'll buy you a fucking beer. I don't give a fuck. I'll buy a beer all day, every day. Fuck, if you guys come around, we'll drink some heavy shit. We'll drink some vodka. You know what I'm saying? So you guys always have a fucking choice. You guys choose to hang out with me on a fucking Saturday night, which is the best time of the year, time of the week, time and period. Saturdays are always fucking good. But there's a lot of things you guys could have done, but you chose to hang out with me, so I fucking appreciate the hell out of it. So thank you very much. As always, if you like it, like it, please subscribe. Tell your friends far and wide. Be good to yourself. Good to each other. Go out. Live life to the fullest. Have some adventures. Get some scars. Tell some stories. Find some love and all that jazz, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.